Okay, it's time for one of my favorite segments, and that's when I get to sit down and talk to somebody that's had a very unusual and spectacular career. With us now is Eric Coleman, former NFL football player. Yay, go team! <laughs> <laughs> How are you, my friend? I'm great. Thanks for having me today. Good, good. We were talking in the green room a little bit about your upbringing, so mm -hmm. let's talk about where you're from, which is Washington, the great state of Washington. Yeah, I'm from Spokane, Washington. It's a, it's a small city uh, about eight miles from Idaho. Yeah. Uh so did you grow up eating Idaho potatoes? I grew up eating Idaho potatoes, um, onions. You know, we have the big onion uh, from Walla Walla. You know, we have all the good food over there. So when you were growing up, how did you know that you were good at playing football? Like, what was the moment that you said, hey, you know what, this guy's got skill? Well, you know, growing up, I played all the sports. I played basketball, baseball, and football. And, you know, as I got into high school, it kind of chose me. I always thought I was going to be like an NBA player or something. But when I got into high school, I started getting recruiting letters from different colleges and, um, you know, Coaches started calling me, and I'm like, oh, I'm pretty good at this, I guess. You know, maybe I can get a scholarship. And I got a scholarship to Washington State University, and some of my friends went to the NFL, and, you know, eventually I got, I was blessed enough to get drafted as well. But you also got your degree, I read. Yes, I um, okay. have a, a communications degree from Washington State. Um, I went into college wanting to be an FBI agent. You did? Yeah, I wanted to be, uh, you know, I was always into law enforcement and you know, armed forces and everything like that. And I, I started out with a criminal justice uh, degree, but I had to switch that because football, the demands of football were, were pretty tough. And what were those rehearsals, those rehearsals, what were those, <laughs> those like practices like? I'm, I'm in entertainment, so they're rehearsals to us, but practices, you know, for a typical uh, college football player, what are those practices like? In college, it was, it was very limited because you had class time and you had to work around everyone's schedule. But, you know, once I went to the NFL, it became a, compl it was a job. You know, we you had to wake up, be there at seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, we were in meetings for about six hours out of the day. We practiced for about three. Uh, it, it, was a real, it was a real difference, a big difference. You know, a lot of times people just think it's game time. They're like, oh, they only work like an hour or two a week, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not like that. Yeah, a lot, a lot of preparation goes into to playing in the NFL. And, you know, teams are so smart. You know, you have, the, the playbook is about three inches thick. Uh, now they're on iPads, but, you know, they're very thick. You have to know a lot. And that was probably the biggest transition from playing college to the NFL was the, the mental side of the game. And what did you do to um, convey camaraderie between your college team and then your first pro team? What, how did you transition that? Well, it, it was, it was it's, that's one of the fun things in the NFL because there's a bunch of guys who are the best players at their college, so everyone has pride in their college. And, you know, everyone, when, when Saturday comes, you're always looking at your college school, like, oh, my school's playing your school. <laughs> and, you know, we do bets, and, you know, you'd see guys wearing the other team's, uh, the other guys' jerseys after, they, after their team lost. But, uh, you know, it was always something that was fun, and that was something that was cool about playing in the NFL. It was like you, are, you always knew someone from another team or from your college that it was a pretty good circle. And kind of like a brotherhood too. I was out in Nebraska and they don't even have pro teams, but they treat mm -hmm. their college as if it is a pro team, right? Oh yeah. So it's, it's serious. Yeah, right? football is live in the Midwest and down South. You know, when I played for the Atlanta Falcons, uh, I, I, after playing for the Jets, I went to Atlanta and the Jets fans are crazy. I went to Atlanta and no one was at the games. And I, I was asking people, why, why aren't people showing up for our games? And they're like, because they're, you know, they were celebrating the college game at the University of Georgia. So uh, down south, they're, they're all about college football, and it's the same in the Midwest. And then you went from uh, that team, so you, went, you played for the Jets, mm -hmm. and then you played for the Falcons, and then, and then I, the Lions, Yeah, right? and then okay. I finished up with the Lions. Played two years in Detroit. Uh, that was, it, was a, it was a fun two years. You know, I had my, my second daughter while I was there. Um, but, you know, living in Detroit is a, is a bit different from living in the big city of New York. Yeah, I can imagine. And how do you balance that? How did you balance your professional football career with your family life? Because you met your wife here, right? Yeah, I met my wife. How did you balance all that? I met my wife here. It was, um, it was tough. You know, a lot of the guys want to go out and party and hang out. But I was always, you know, all about my family. You know, went home right after work. Uh, and I think it, it's paid off. You know, my, my kids are, are healthy. They're happy. And, and we're a very close-knit group. And how did you get those family values? Was that instilled in you at a young age as well? Yeah, it was, it was instilled in, in me. You know, we were, I had a big family growing up. You know, we, we weren't, uh, I guess, we didn't have, a, we didn't have it as good as okay. most families did. But, you know, my brother, as he was younger than me, I raised my brother pretty much. And, um, you know, when I met my wife, my wife is Sicilian. She's from Long Island. And they're all about family. You know, they have Sunday dinner every Sunday. You know, dinners at every, every night at 6 o'clock. And that's just something that I gravitated to. And I love raising my kids in this area. Uh, Long Island is such a, a, a melting pot and so many great people. Uh, it, it's a great place to live. 
And it's nice too that I've seen that you've been able to transition from being an NFL pro player into having a profession. And a lot of times th it doesn't happen for the guys. Like the guys just think mm -hmm. that, you know, when they spend all their money and then they don't have a livelihood after, it's a real struggle for them. Yeah. What do you think, was it your family or what else would uh, attribute to that success for you, being able to step out of it, step out of the game? Well, you know, I think what helped me when I first got into the NFL, I had guys like Curtis Martin, um, Chad Pennington um, kind of show me the way. You know, it, it's easy to when you're, when you're 21 years old to get handed all these millions of dollars and to tell you, go be responsible with it. There's not too many people who are going to. But, um, but Curtis was one, of, one guy who kind of helped me to, to think about the long term, think about, you know, you have to make this money stretch and what are you going to do after you're done playing? You can't play football your whole life. So, um, you know, I had a lot of good people who helped me transition, it, tr transition out of the game. Um, you know, it is tough for a lot of people because, you know, while you're playing, playing a game, playing football, your college, the people who you knew in college, they're working professionally. Yeah. So you kind of have to play catch up once you're done playing football. But um, I've been able to transition well. I'm doing broadcasting for the Jets and also run a medical practice in Long Island as well. Yeah, you're doing fantastic. You're thank definitely you. a winner. So thank you for being here. I hope you'll come back. Oh, thank you for having and, me. I'd love to come back. And congratulations to your family because I know you just said that your son's christening was last night. So congratulations to you and all your success. Oh, thank you very you're much. You're a lovely person. <laughs> so stay tuned for more on Live It Up. We're taking him off the field and to your home.